Y100 Texas Made, brought to you by Thirsty Horse Saloon. Hayden Baker, you have made it to we the big it. show, man. Welcome. Come on. How you doing? Very good. Uh, you came down from Austin today? Came down right? from Austin, dressed just like you, minus the sick boots. Dude, when... <laughs> Those are nice. Back at you, man. When you. Uh, when you walked in, like, we're getting set up and everything here, and I was like, oh, my goodness, because, like, we did not coordinate this. But, I mean, nope. this is pretty much what I wear, like, every day, though. Sitting the same as you, too. I did so. not plan oh, that either. Well, <laughs> let's, let's switch. I think last time I was here, I was on that side. Like, not that it matters or anything. <laughs> but, yeah, that's crazy. Um, I guess we're, like, best friends now. I guess. We have much. to be. We hang out with the same crew, though, the Watson boys. That's right. Um, we actually got to meet for the first time. This was back in December, and we were at Green Hall. And, dude, you yep. opened up for Aaron uh, just acoustic. Yep. And that is not an easy thing to do. Like, you you go up there, and Green Hall is packed, sold-out oh, yeah. show. And you yep. got all these girls like, ah. Yeah. And, I mean, most of them are there for Jake They Watson, were there for Jake. But, yep, um, not me. dude, like, you killed it. And I, I loved what I heard. And just uh be able to have the gout to do that you know yeah well i <laughs> appreciate gall, that i guess to do that right that was that was a fun night I, I did you heard what happened after that night right i don't know so that i was i played with them the next night too for the christmas show at yeah, green yeah. hall and i went back home to austin that night and my truck got broken into and they stole i mean you're not supposed to leave your gear in your car which i know but yeah. it was like 3 a.m and i was tired so i brought my guitars inside but they got my pedal board my show backpack personal backpack macbook and everything so I wake up Sunday and I'm like, oh my God, like yeah. $7,000 worth of gear. I let Aaron and I were supposed to write on Sunday. And so I just texted him. I was like, dude, I, I got to go check pawn shops. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll see you Did at you Soundcheck. You None of it. You have an air tag on your stuff? No, no. It was a lot of, lot of hard lessons learned there. But Golly, the, the silver lining was that night at, uh, at Green Hall, um, I did a, you know, a Christmas, uh, set opening up for Aaron and then he did a Christmas show which was fantastic yeah. and from the stage he told the crowd what happened gave me a little talking to oh, like yeah. like you know like a father son thing and then uh he told the crowd that his daughter Jolie Kate was going to stand at the merch booth with a Santa hat and for them to fill it up and he was like and I'll start it with $500 and his fans that night I mean it was we got all the stuff replaced like just being able to purchase wow. other things so so yeah, that was the that was right after we met Dude, <laughs> that well, night. Well, first of all, he's unbelievable, and just you know, like Aaron stays after every show and hugs oh, yeah. and uh, you know takes pictures with everybody. And uh, he's he's such a good dude, and he's so good to his fans. But for him to do that, like that's incredible. Absolute salt of the earth, and I'm I'm in his debt, man. I hopefully, really am. Hopefully, you had all your stuff backed up. Most yeah. Of it. Yes. Yeah. All okay. that stuff's all that stuff's good. It was just, the hardest thing was the the pedal board. Like as a guitar oh, yeah. player, like I had that thing wired and just set so perfectly, and yeah. it was like dad gum it. But well, I think about like my Mac, dude, and as a DJ, like yeah, I never leave my uh, backpack like anywhere. Yeah, um, it's always with me. Like if I get out of my vehicle, like yep. I don't leave it in the vehicle. And then, dude, but downloading all those VSTs and everything and oh, all the plugins gosh. is some nerd stuff. But yeah, you know, having to like redo all that stuff and sessions and oh my gosh. Yep, that's one of those lessons <gasps> that you only learn one time. You never think it's gonna happen to you, especially at your house. You know, Jeez. and uh, they they got us, but but we're all good now. I got a new MacBook in that backpack right good. there that nobody's okay. gonna get. Yeah, don't. don't That's why I brought it up here. <laughs> That's why yeah, I brought it up good. here. I'm not in good. the truck. Well, hey man, at that uh, Green Hall show, and this was like the first song that um I heard from you, and I'd sent it to uh, my dude Casanova here at the station, mm -hmm. and um <laughs> the the I'm uh, oh well, I'm having a brain fart now. I always do this. The the but hard times call for at hard least liquor. I'm here. At least, at least I'm, I'm here. here. Yeah, I had it earlier. And uh, it's like, dude, like half the battle is showing up, right? right? But we heard that song and we heard that line. Yeah. And I sent it to my dude and I was like, dude, he's on to something. He was like, this <laughs> sounds good. I was like, who is this guy? And he's like, oh. That's but, awesome. But you played that. You like you closed with that at Green. Yep. And uh, that was so good. And I'm going to need a copy of that, too, because I do want to add that to Texas Made. So Would people hear I'll get that, that to you. on the reg just as a recurrent. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, that one's that one's done done really well for us. That's our most popular on streaming. Um, and, and yeah, I love playing that song live. That is so fun. And that was like 2022 when that came out? 22. That was the, yeah, that was the first one, the first song I released after taking like a, I guess it was like a two or three year hiatus from putting music out. That was when I was up in Nashville and focusing on writing and everything. And this one just, that one felt the most like me. Okay. So, so that's, that's done really well for us. Well, and the, the world was still like trying to bring it back to normal, it's I true. think too. So like that connected with me and I'm like, man, like. Could be worse. We're here. Yeah. People, people are always going to want to go out, whether stuff's good or bad. They're always going to want to hear music. They're always going to want to go have some drinks. Yep. So, it's a fun. It's just a fun time. Every all of our uh, 
close friends and 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 diehards still say that one's just their favorite. It's just yeah. a fun listen. It connects. Yep, that's the important thing. Something else about you, man, is you're an Aggie. That's it. So uh, the reason you're actually here is so we can get George Strait tickets from Source because I heard that <laughs> alumni can actually buy tickets already, which is crazy. So I did not even know that. Oh well, well then. I guess I got some homework to do. I guess we have no hookup today. <laughs> so I had no idea. Somebody I know yeah. that you met that I'm not going to say their name on here. Um, they spent like thousands of dollars on tickets because they had a connection through some alum, I guess. Interesting. People that have given money to the school or something, so they okay. have, you know, first dibs on tickets. I got a couple ideas of who that could be in my head. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that is crazy. Wow. Um, but you're we going to be there in College Station. Yeah, we're going to be there the night before, or uh, at least I am, um, playing the – I'm wearing the hat, right? Yep. Yeah. The Dixie Chickens 50th anniversary party. Oh, great. Uh, on the 14th. So that'll be Friday night. And the next day is going to be George and Parker and, and Katie. So yeah. so I might have to snag some tickets somehow and go to that show since well, I'll be there. Congrats to the Dixie Chicken. 50 years, man. That's it's impressive. Uh, it's, man, I, so yeah, I, I went to a and I, I was only there. I don't even feel like I went there because I spent three years playing college like I baseball. Just <laughs> well, no, I did. But um, I, I was only an Aggie Oh, okay. And I was only on campus because of the pandemic for like one semester. Oh, yeah. So I really only went to that campus for like one semester. And I don't even feel like I earned this ring because we were just doing it at home during yeah. COVID. Uh, but I grew up in Aggie. My dad uh, graduated in 85. My sister is class of uh, 22. Most of my band is Aggies. My girlfriend's class of 20. So we're all, we bleed maroon, man. And uh, the chicken is one of the hot spots on Northgate. Okay. It's been around forever. And uh, we filmed a music video there uh, a couple months ago for a song called Something I Can't Do, which is one of the pre-release singles off of the new yeah. album that yeah, comes out next month. Yeah, you got like a few month. that are out. We've like got right five, now. yeah. We've been okay. doing one a month, just kind of sprinkling them out there, taking advantage of streaming and everything. And um, we filmed the video for Something I Can't Do there. Luckily, they allowed us to take over the bar at like 8 a.m. on a Monday. Yeah. And we had the whole band in there set up acoustic style and... They gave me this sick hat, and yeah. then the apparently the owner saw the video and was like, we need him for the 50th anniversary party. Oh, there you go. So we're like, awesome, I'm yeah. there. So I think it's going to be me, uh, Keller Cox, Donis Morris, Max Stalling, and I know there's one more, and I'm forgetting the name. Uh, it's going to be a it's gonna be a heck of a time. Well, yeah. We'll have to put that on the calendar. If uh, if you make it up to College Station that Friday before the George show. Yeah, we'll get a little pre-Kyle pre, pre uh, Kyle Field show party for you Friday yeah. night. Yeah, it's we'll have to check one. out all of Northgate and all that stuff over there. I've, I I don't really know the area, so. I'll show you around. Okay. I've been to I all like of them. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so um, the the song that you sent me, obviously you felt like, hey, this is the one that we're really excited about. That's why you're getting this one and not the other ones. Yeah, well, I'll send you the whole album if you want. I do want it. Because uh, I've got it. But, yeah, this one. Let this, Love Do Its Thing. Let Love Do Its Thing is um, it's it's the most, I think, commercial-sounding song on the project. It's my favorite track uh, that I've ever done. I, I co-produced this project with one of my good friends, Travis Bishop, who he actually plays keys for Neil McCoy on the road. Okay. And we've worked together for years in the studio. And, man, this one, just as a as a guitar player, I played all the guitar parts on this whole uh, album, this song included. I just love how this track turned out. It just sounds so full, and we've actually been playing it live since, like, 2021. I wrote this song, like, three years ago on a plane <laughs> by myself, yeah. and just the minute I wrote it, I showed the band guys, and I was like, we can get them dancing to this song, I, I guarantee you. And they have been for, like, two years. Every time we play this song in a dance hall, it fills up. So I am very excited about this one. It's uh, It's been doing well for us on streaming already, and, uh, yeah, this – I sent that one out to you guys for a reason. I think it's the most radio friendly one we got on the project. I like that a lot. Like sometimes like I get songs and they're all over the place or they're like five minutes long or I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty long. But yeah. no, no, you know, like get it like around three ish. Yep. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and make it sound good too, man. And with you, everything is so bright. Um, the guitars and everything. And mm -hmm. that, that's crazy that you're playing like everything. You're like Ben Folds. Everything. Basically, right. Yeah. Well, at, and even that song, too. That was one of the ones where I played like five different guitar tracks. Like the I play a Telecaster as like mm -hmm. the lead thing, which is all throughout that song. But I played a Strat on that song. I played normal acoustic, high strung acoustic. Um, there might even be some baritone stuff in that song. So it's just it's such a full sounding track to me. I love how it turned out. Love it. And you got somebody else that is, like, one of the best guitar players of all time that's going to be on the album. Are, are yep. we able to say officially? We are. We okay. are. It, I mean, we're shoot. The, it'll be out in, like, three weeks, so yeah. I, we might as well. Yeah, Brad Paisley is going to be on the album. 
uh, we're doing a guitar instrumental together called Don't Meet Your Heroes um, in, the, in the sarcastic <laughs> vein because uh, he has that sense of humor, obviously, and I do too. Um, but uh, you'll hear the, the interesting thing will be to see how many people can tell who's who because that's the whole thing with our dynamic is I, you know, stole everything from him and he he jo <laughs> he jokes i think that he's gonna lawyer up and sue me and you'll, you'll hear that at the end of the at the end of the track but um i can picture yeah. a nationwide commercial in my head already or something oh, yeah. and, like you in it or something that, that would be Peyton. yeah <laughs> Peyton. Omaha. so uh so that that's uh nestled halfway through the track listing on the album and this is like a guitar battle though like between you two yeah of. i mean he smokes me but i did i joke i saw him in houston this past weekend and uh, it was the first time i'd seen him since he recorded his parts and uh, he was like, what do you think? Like, do you love it? And I was like, oh, man, you, you smoked me. Yeah. I was like, but, I, yeah, you actually, when I got your parts, I, I went in and re-recorded one of my solos at the end. He goes, yeah, I usually like having the last word, too, you know, when I have the, when That's it's my song. crazy. So, so yeah, it's, it's cool. But there's also, like, a, a section <laughs> in the middle where we're kind of harmonizing with each other and... It's just it's a dream come true for the guitar player in me, man. It's so, so cool. Did did you start with guitar and then start singing later? I did. I, I would imagine. I did, and I started backwards on the guitar too. I learned solos first. Like I was like, I don't want to learn chords. I want to learn you know these guitar solos. And uh, I started playing when I was about sixteen, so about ten years ago. Um, and I, I it came under my fingers like pretty quickly. But then when I saw Brad play in Houston, I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. That's what I want to do, and I went home and learned everything he did. When was that? Uh, I guess I was 17. I was about a year in playing. Okay. And, and you just saw him like here, like this this past weekend, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to. We every time he comes into town, if I'm around, I usually go out and say say hey to him. And then if I'm in Nashville, we'll get together and have lunch. He actually gave me a uh, Telecaster guitar last year that I played. It's my number one. It's the best freaking guitar ever. Um, so we got a good friendship. He's just salt of the earth and he's always been so kind. So, so yeah, man, he's on the, he's on the record with us. You think about Texas country and it's like, yes, we have our own thing, but it's like, don't be afraid though to, you know, collaborate with Nashville. I oh, mean, yeah. Like, like this is a great example. And Brad Paisley is like all time, all time. So, um, dude, that's, that's incredible. Like I would, I would encourage more people to, um, seek out relationships like that and and find songs like if you're not a great songwriter or maybe you're not a great guitar player try to get brad paisley like whatever you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah i mean so if you want to go crazy try to learn brad paisley's guitar licks because they man. man a lot of a lot of hours put into that but but so worth it it's it's so rare that you can call your hero your friend yeah. you know and that's and, and, and then be a good person too you know because usually that that's why that's why it's called Don't Meet Your Heroes, that, that instrumental, because that's what everybody usually says. Yeah. And it's just it's me just being a jackass. Too. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Seems like Texas, too, um, there, there's a lot of dudes that are, like, really into guitar right now. Yeah. And, like, y'all kind of got, like, a club. It's like like all y'all are becoming buddies. Everybody's, like, combining forces right now. It's like yeah. you and Braxton, and then y'all are friends yeah. with Zach Top, right? Yep, Zach's like, a I'm picker. Just name dropping everybody. And then, obviously, like, Jake Watson is getting on board. Jake's getting on board. becoming a monster. Uh, me and, and Scotty Alexander and David Lewis have started uh, – There, David lives out in Cyprus, and Scotty lives in, in Buda. Uh, we've started a like a little three-man song swap show that we've done one uh, at the Kenny store in January, and it sold out. So we're going to do more, I bet. But it's uh, we call it the Texas Guitar Slingers because those two are just – those two are two of the best guitar players I've ever heard play. Show up and shred. Just show up and shred, play our songs, That's you know, and – Show up and shred. <laughs> Show up and shred. That's gonna be the Say Texas guitar singer fast. merch. There oh you go. <laughs> but uh, but yes, yeah, and Scotty's a great fiddle player too, yeah. and uh, so it's always a blast to get with those guys. But yeah, the I've I've been saying this. It it seems like you know the guitar thing is making its way back into you know country, you know, because there was a time where it was Brad and it was Keith Urban and Vince Gill and Steve mm -hmm. Warner and all these guys were doing the singing, the picking, and the writing. You know, the triple threat thing, and you just don't you hadn't seen that much in the past 10 years but like you said with guys like zach top coming in and we're coming hard coming man. hard billy strings is you know oh, yeah. is yeah. massive and um i know i'm forgetting some but a lot of the guys i write with in nashville like there's a guy named will jones who is just now starting to put music out who's fantastic and he absolutely shreds um sam banks is another one timothy baker um, the guitar is on its way back uh, into country music, well, which I'm the, happy the, to the be part boys, of. The Nashville boys, they come to Texas, too, and they know that there's some serious talent here. Oh, for sure. For sure. It's That gap is really being bridged, I feel like, yeah. more so now than ever uh, with what Cody's done and Parker and, and those guys. And you see what, like, 
we're you not know, as pop heavy right now. We're a little more traditional. It's, yeah, it's overall. it's coming back. Country's cool again, as Lenny Wilson yes. says. Um, so She's I mean, putting on for everybody. She right sure now. is, yeah. man. I'm happy to. I feel like I'm, you know, coming up in a, in a great time for country music. I, I think it's it's all starting to click, which is fun. So the album is coming out April twelfth. April twelfth. And the album is called Barely Getting By. And your favorite thing about the album? That uh, I got. To, this is the first album I played all the guitar parts on. Usually I'll play like the lead stuff, the solos and the guitar and like the signature licks. But um, for the past couple of years, actually, Aaron's guitar player Bryce Clark, yeah, uh, he would play and do all the rhythm stuff and like the textural, like the stuff where you really have to be, you know, you have to think about. Like for me, it's just mindless, just you know, just going crazy. But this project, I was like, no, I actually want all the guitar to be me, and I want to try to do that kind of stuff and it was a tremendous challenge but i learned a lot from bryce and a lot from other uh cats in the studio and i really got to wear a ton of different hats as a studio guitar player which was so much fun like i played 15 different guitars on this album yeah which was great so that's as as a guitar nerd that's probably my favorite thing about this project I it's, think. it sounds like there's there's work for you just playing guitar for folks though honestly yeah like you don't even have to be like a singer. That's the backup plan. Yeah, so that's the that's, that's easy. the backup plan. <laughs> I've got. I, I mean, early on in my career, I got told that a ton. It was like, why are you doing this? Like, go be someone's guitar player. And I was like, well, I, not to say that would be easy, but it would be. You know, I, I want a real challenge of being the the being artist. The artist. Of that's, that's the next level. Writing though, the songs sure. and and because singing for me like never came easy. It, yeah. It's something I had to continuously work at, and I feel like I've tremendously improved on in the past. You know, three or four years, but. I know there's still work to be done, which that to me is good. That is, that's like that's what gets me up in the morning is, no, I've got something I have to grind at if I want to be good at this. No so, Tell yeah. me about shows coming up. I know we got one next week. We do. We'll be here in Selma at the Blue Bonnet Palace on the 29th of March. And then, uh, let's see, the weekend after that, we're going to be out in Harper at the station on 290. I think it's like for the Eclipse show. Because oh, okay. I didn't know how big a deal this was, but oh, apparently yeah. uh, Kerrville – it's gonna have like half oh, a million people. Yeah, they're like shutting everything down. They've declared like it a disaster. Disaster thing. Yeah. Thing, yeah. So we're gonna be out in Harper uh, for that, and then the weekend the album comes out, uh, Thursday night the 11th, I'll be in Georgetown at uh, Tejas Meat Supply for a little like intimate acoustic release party with Shiner Beer, oh, yeah. helping us throw that. Friday night's gonna be the big shebang. We'll be at uh, Mo's place in Katy, my hometown okay. uh, bar. We're having. A release party there. Trent Cowie's going to open for us. Shiner's going to be out there as well. And then Saturday the 13th, we just got uh, booked on Bandera with John Wolf oh, at yeah, 11th right. Street. Cowboy Bar. Cowboy Bar. And a uh, ton of shows getting booked right now uh, over the summer. A lot of opportunities to go see Hayden. A lot of them. Coming to Colorado uh, for the first time, too, in, uh, in August. Going to be in Pueblo headlining there. So we're we're going all over, man. We're tell, going all over. Tell everybody about Shiner real quick. You and Y'all's relationship, um, not not my dog Shiner, not your dog. Shiner That's your dog's beer. name, Shiner. Man, yeah. I really ought to but, name a dog Shiner. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we just. That's we how you know you're texting. That's when you it. Got a dog named Shiner. That's right. <laughs> one name Shiner and one name Bach. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That we we started teaming up with Shiner uh, almost a year ago. I want to say it might have been like May or June of last year, but it, it this my relationship with Shiner goes way back, like pre this sponsorship. I started a Shiner collection with my college roommates at A&M, and uh, we were up at like 50 of them before Shiner came on board. But when I first met uh, one of the reps and they said they were looking for some young artists to sign, I was like, I'm your guy. I will ride for your brand. Let me send you a picture of my living room yes. <laughs> or my kitchen yeah, yeah, yeah. and show you what we've got going on. And so they've been great to, to work with. They've taken good care of us. Uh, I just did a show with them last night. And, uh, and the be I think the best part about it is that I get, like, first access to their newest brews. Oh, yeah. The, oh, so, like, like, seasonals, maybe? They're seasonals, oh, yeah. Their next one is a Lemonade Shandy <sighs> that is banging. I got to try it last weekend. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. It is so good. We so. about to start acting up once it starts getting real warm here. <laughs> oh, I already said that's That's the boat beer this summer <laughs> oh, for me. Oh, my gosh. It's great. Uh, so, that, and there's a bunch of other ones coming out, too. Does that come in, too. like, the skinny can, like, for the girls? I haven't you know? seen that. It's, they got a <laughs> bottle of it. I got the bottle for okay. my collection already, yeah. and then I, I've seen the little... 12 ounce cans okay so it's yeah shiners uh, that's what i love about them is they just try so many different things it's so texas though it too, is. man like i oh, i love shiner so much You're talking about yeah and everything and just being out there with them um you know over the years like so fun they're great wow man. That's yeah, great. We're, i'm honored to be a part of it uh with them and, and have them on board it's it's great 
I love it. Let's do something. Let's let's wrap up here. This is something we do um, on the show every time that, that somebody okay. is on the show for the first time. All right. And it's called That's What I Like About Texas. All right. And uh, shout out to Dairy Queen because I actually talked to some folks from Dairy Queen yesterday. They were like, hey, we love this bit. So shout out to them. Heck yeah. But this is the Hayden Baker edition of That's What I Like About Texas. Top three things. Go. Top three things I like about Texas. Uh, there's, <laughs> as an artist that travels so much, there's a Bucky's everywhere you look. Like, it seems like it's just every, every time I got to go to a show, I'm like, all right, where's the Bucky's at? Okay, perfect. We're going to stop there. That's probably, uh, that's probably one of them. Two of them is, the second one is how well this state treats its own, especially as an artist. Like, there's no other state in the country, you know, I guess aside from Tennessee with Nashville, that you can literally make a living as an artist only if you just played this state. Because it's so big, they love original music. You know, they will they will pay you good money to come play your songs, even if you're a nobody like me. You know, it's it's just No, don't say that. I will. <laughs> I won't. I will. You're well here. even I'm here. That's this true. Is a CMA nominated radio station. You heard it here first. I'm no longer a nobody. But there was a time where I would consider myself one and we and I was still making a living like down here, which I think is just the coolest thing. There's nowhere else in the world that you can we do that. We take care of our people. Take care of our people here. Um third thing. Man, uh, I guess how much they love um, football because I, I, you know, I'm an Aggie, so I grew up like Aggie football. That stadium where George Strait's gonna be playing. Yep. I've been to some electric football games in that stadium, and you can't find. Them. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I know there's there's the big house in Michigan, and there's Ohio State and everything, but <laughs> nothing is as loud as Kyle Field. Nah. On an SEC home game, man. And Nothing's speaking of that, be as loud as a George Strait concert at Kyle Field with Parker the, McCollum and Katie Offerman. That's what I'm saying. Us. They're talking about breaking a record, aren't they? Yeah. From what I hear. Yeah. Which I, I think they will. I don't know what. I think George has like the North American record, perhaps already. I think so. Um, like over a hundred thousand, obviously. But yeah. At Kyle Field with him in the middle in the round. Yeah. The stadium. On the field, they can do a hundred and. 10 or 14 They could probably do or 120 something crazy, or something because like, the seats hold like 102. Okay. So if they're going to do the, the field, field, yeah, he's going to shatter it. But I, I think I think that the, uh, the Bucky's everywhere, how well we take care of our own here in football, man. I love college football. And that and that A&M UT game yeah. coming back finally this year is going to be that, – that might rival the, the noise <laughs> of the George Strait concert. That stadium is going to be insane on Thanksgiving it. this year. Let's let's start with uh, George Strait, and then yeah, and then yeah. Too. Oh my gosh, Dude. it's gonna be a year for that. Hopefully, that hopefully we'll see it there at a College Station come June. We'll be yeah. taking some shots with Manzel or something like that. I actually ran into him at, on Northgate one time and did do a shot with him. There you go. Yeah, he's a great well, dude. That's why we're hanging out for sure. Come on, Hayden Baker on Texas Made. Thank you for having me, Bob. Absolutely.